Hi guys, welcome to Martin Made. My name's Stephanie, and today I am going to be giving you a brief update, if I can keep it brief, on what's been going on the past month. So some of you know that I am one who has epilepsy. I have suffered with it for quite a long time, but some of you may know that um, I have recently been having a lot of issues with it, but others might not. I try not to throw it all over my YouTube channel just because it's not something, like it's part of my life, but it's not actually something that my channel is about. So epilepsy doesn't come up all that much on my channel. Well, as of late, I have had a lot going on in the realm of my life um, having to do with epilepsy. So I thought I would kind of address it a little bit more again today. Um, the past two videos I've posted, um, one of them wasn't about epilepsy, but the one that came out around that same time was about epilepsy because I was in the hospital. The other one, um, I was still in the hospital, so I went ahead and just did a video um, while I was in the hospital about being in the hospital with um, COVID going on. So I thought I would go through and I would kind of give a brief summary of what like the past has been like and what the most recent past has been and then kind of give you a reason why I went was in the hospital and all of that why all that's been going on so in the past I have had epilepsy I, at four years old um, my mom realized that um, I was having some issues and she took me to the doctor they found out it was epilepsy um, that's back when I was four years old um, it lasted for a couple years and then once I hit about six to seven, they kind of not so much disappeared, but they just weren't active at all. And so I ended up being taken off of medicine for them and I hit puberty. They did come back, but there were years between them. And so I ended up not being on medicine until, um, actually not all that long back when I my husband um, he he ended up getting a new job when he started that new job I ended up having quite a few at one time and I ended up at a hospital in our area and at the time I didn't really have a neurologist because I had come from the States and moved to Canada and so I didn't have a neurologist yet. And so the neurologist I saw just took me on. Let me tell you, he was, if maybe some of you might have worse, but he was a pretty bad neurologist. Like, not that, it, like, I'm sure he had the smarts to be a neurologist, but he was more so just like rude, inconsiderate, um, he didn't listen. Like, he was set in his ways. So, like, if he thought things needed to be done a certain way and only his way, like, he wouldn't ever listen. Not just to, like, ideas, but to things that we would say. So, when we were trying to have kids, if you know our backstory, we struggled for years to have children. We had already been trying when I ended up with my neurologist and we told him right off from the bat. My husband and I, we've been trying for a year already for children. So he knew that. He wrote it in his notes, everything like that. Um, and then every single appointment, it would come up. I would say, yep, yeah, we're trying to have kids. Like we're going in to see a, a doctor about my hormones and... We are with a fertility clinic. We are doing um, injections, you know, all that stuff. Like every time I'd go, which wasn't like it was years in between, 
I would go and I'd see him and he'd be like, well, we talked about that at the beginning of the appointment. And at, by the end of the appointment, he'd be like, um, just remember, whenever you guys are ready to start trying for kids, just let me know. So it wasn't just that he wouldn't listen to our ideas neurologically. It was more like he just wouldn't listen. And so um, I had some issues with him during when my I was pregnant with my son. Then again, when I was pregnant with my daughter, she was like, we had to up my medicine with my son. So whenever I was that far along with my daughter, um, I told, went in and we were talking about how we should probably up my medicine again, the dosage, just because last time I was pregnant with my son, we had to up it because of the amount of water that's in your body and and all by the time you hit a certain stage in your pregnancy. Well, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Two weeks later, I have a seizure. And so that was when my husband and I decided, you know what? We're going to get a new neurologist because we he just put my daughter in danger. He put me in danger. And so that was like the final straw it was like, you know what, this is it. So we, we, it took quite a while to get a new neurologist, but we finally got a new neurologist and, um, it happened toward the end of that year. So a lot had happened. We still had to go see our other neurologist because of everything going on with the, I was pregnant still and all and so we hit June when my daughter was due and she was born June 22nd um, 2019 she was born then by c-section because she was breech and they couldn't get her to turn so then the very next week I went into a bunch of seizures I lost memory from a day and a half I couldn't remember what had happened. I didn't know what day it was. I couldn't remember what had happened the week before. I had no idea that I had had a C-section and I have had like staples in my abdomen. Like, you know, I had no idea about any of that. Completely gone. And so that was a huge thing. The next week, same thing went into a bunch of seizures and from then on like I have dealt with tons of seizures I've had more seizures since June to present than I've ever had in my entire life and it was like something happened when I had my daughter so sure enough we kind of thought well maybe it's the hormones maybe it's just from the c-section we weren't sure what was going on I got put on different medicine they tried a ton of stuff. We ended up back, we ended up in with our new neurologist and she decided to take me off of the Keppra that I was on because emotionally I was so unstable. I was all over the map and so emotionally I wasn't doing well. But, um, but anyway, we finally changed over to um, Lamotrigine and um, we also eventually ended up adding clobazam and when I got put on the lamotrigine it would have been in January or thereabouts um no it would have been February um the lamotrigine started early or end of last year with my neurologist that I have now and um, she had put me on that and then once a month I started pretty much having seizures and then it went from once a month to every week having seizures and I have been having seizures every week since um the end of February probably middle of February um and we met with her before all this COVID stuff started happening and she said if you ever have to get somewhere um 
about the seizures. Like if you ever start going into seizures, she's like, don't go to the hospital right near you. She's like, there's a hospital that is, um, that is down, um, in Toronto. I want you to go to that hospital in Toronto and I want you to go there because they are amazing with people with epilepsy. They have etologists, they have neurologists, they have this whole team that's just so, so focused on people with epilepsy. And so we had heard that and, and kind of put up the back of our minds. We weren't actually sure. It's like, it's a very long drive for us to get there. So it's like, it's a big deal to go. Um, anyway, so I ended up, would have been about a month ago, starting to have problems with coughing. I was, I started getting a cough and then the coughing started feeling like I had stuff in my chest. And then to top it all off, I started having trouble breathing. I would breathe in and every day that I had this, it felt like I had less and less space to breathe in, almost like my lung was filling up. So I ended up calling my doctor because we were in the middle of the COVID. He couldn't see me. He chatted with me and he's like, you need to get to the emergency room. He said, come by my office and I will have a letter um, dropped off at the front desk. Um, Come in, get the letter and go to the emergency room. It'll have a list of things I want them to check for. So I get there. They do the x-ray, they do a CT scan, they find out that I had some pneumonia, but then they also found a spot on my lung. And so they said, you're going to be here for a little bit. So I go in, they start me on antibiotics right away, and then they started treating me, or they started testing me for tuberculosis. So, um... That's a three-phase test. I got tested for the tuberculosis. Um, Tests all came back negative. I got isolated, everything. This is all during COVID. I was in the hospital for a week that, that week. Then I was home for two days and I went into some more seizures. I started having a bunch of seizures There were little seizures, but um, I wasn't with it. I don't even remember the drive, the long drive to the hospital. When I woke up, I thought we were still in the town that we had been in. I had no idea like where we were or any of that. And so they ran tests and tests and tests and blood work and blood work and blood work. I was in the hospital for just about two weeks, um, all by myself (laughs) through Mother's Day. Um, and I got released on my son's birthday. Now, all of that, um, this is the part where it gets into the, um, what just happened. And what just happened over the past couple weeks, why I was in the hospital, was the seizures but they decided that the medicine I had been put on was actually making my seizures worse so they have changed me over to another medicine valproic acid and they have me on that and they weaned me off the other and put me on a new and so they've been doing that they have they had been doing um EEGs every single day so every day in the morning I would go for a daily EEG they would take blood every single day couple vials sometimes sometimes five sometimes two um just depended on the day what they needed um and that was for two weeks um and all throughout this my neurologist has been concerned about my heart. My resting heart rate stays about at a hundred. And, um, like yesterday I was cleaning out the cabinets and 
my heart rate was constantly above 140. So she's concerned about my heart. So we are looking into that as well. Um, not sure if there's a connection, but either way, um, we're checking into that as well. I'm wearing actually a heart monitor, the halter monitor thing. And so, um, that's, that's kind of the rough, this is what's going on and this is what's been going on over the past bit. Um, my little girl turns one on June 22nd of this year and emotionally I've had a really hard go of this. Um, I don't usually say that to a whole lot of people so YouTube, you have been special. <laughs> I've talked to family about this and that's pretty much it. Like. The hard part about her turning one is more I start looking back and seeing a lot of the firsts that she's had, I've missed. Um, while I was gone in the hospital for pretty much three weeks, she cut five teeth and had no teeth before that. Um, I missed all of that. She started waving. Um, when she had her first bottle was when mommy was in the hospital because of seizures um, and I couldn't nurse her so they had to give her a bottle. Um, just stuff like that that you sit back and you're like I would I can't wait to be the one to get to see this happen or you know, be there for this first or that first and I know there's going to be so many more firsts and some of them are even a bigger deal than the her first tooth or um, her learning to wait bye bye. Um, but it's just something that sometimes if you let it get to you, like if you think about it a lot, it will get to you, and you have to you have to get above such things. So um, I do hope. I don't know how, but. I really hope that this video can be an encouragement to some. Um, maybe you're thinking, boy, I'm so glad that I don't have to deal with that. If that's the case, I'm so glad you don't have to deal with this too. It's no fun. Um, if it's the thought more that like I've been an encouragement to you through something I've said, I am so glad I've been able to be that for you. Um, whatever it is, I hope I've been able to encourage you through this. Hey, I got some things done that I wasn't able to get done at home or wouldn't have been able to get done at home. So, look on the positive side. So, anyway, I will let you go and I hope you guys had a great day. Hope you guys have had um, just a really good time sitting and just watching um do pray for me um about the epilepsy that we've figured everything out and everything's good to go and we're we're moving forward so um i will talk to you guys in the next video bye mm -hmm.